Hi, this is Jack Downs. I'm making this recording to explain to you how to use a proportion wheel uh, to measure photos for dummying a page uh, in newspaper page design. Uh, this is also a reminder to me to first or sometime soon explain why we do this and uh, why it's become increasingly important in the recent couple of years. Okay, we're going to size this photo using the proportion wheel. Let me move the camera a little bit. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so the tools I'm going to use are simply a ruler. You can use a regular ruler. It doesn't have to be a fancy pick up hole. Pencil, obviously. You're going to need a pencil or something to write with. Pencil is best because you're going to be doing some scribbling and erasing. And a proportion wheel, which hopefully we have already um, marked up for our column measure. Remember, columns are a relative measurement. One publication's column widths are not the same as another's. Maybe they work on a different grid, maybe they use different size paper. Um, there's certainly different column widths from different types of publications, newsletters, magazines, newspapers. So because there's no single idea of what a column is, we have to tell our proportion wheel what the what the measures are in our publication. And we have for this class a set publication size, which is a pretty common broadsheet size or close to it. Um, and I've marked around on, on the on the wheel the different numbers that represent the columns and the lines where they are. Now the other thing to see about the wheel is that there's an inside and an outside. And I'll put them to roll them together. The the inside says size of original. The outside says reproduction size. So the inside refers to the original, which is our piece of paper. It may not look like an original, but it's what we're starting with. That's what it means. Reproduction size means the size that's going to be in the paper, the size that's going to be on our dummy, and therefore on the printed page. Now the proportions will stay the same. The problem is, as we look at this photo, it has a certain proportion and size on this piece of paper. But we want to know at a different size, width probably, at a different width, how deep will it be? How much space will it take up? Will it get bigger? In some cases it will. Will it get smaller? In some cases it will. So how much space are we going to have to leave for that at a certain width? The first thing we have to do is measure the photograph itself. And, and, and like all these things in, in using the wheel and in dummying, we can be uh, approximate. Um, uh, when we are, we're essentially preparing a sketch or a plan for a page and it is not going to be exact. So it looks to be about, about, and close, and about is close enough, five and a half inches wide. And I'll write that down on the photo. 5.5 and the, the depth or height of the photo, whatever you want to call it, is about four and a half. We'll say four and a half. It's not quite, but we'll say that. This is a little bit squarer than a normal, completely normal horizontal, but it is a horizontal photo. So we know this photo is 5.5 inches wide. That's the number we're going to usually start with because we know in the paper we want it to be, let's say for this example, five columns wide. Five columns is pretty big. It's almost an entire page. So how deep would this photo be? How much depth would it take up if the width was five columns? So our original um, width is 5.5 inches. And you could use some other units here. It doesn't matter. You could use metric system or something as long as you've measured these both in the same units. So I'm going to, on the inside wheel, I'm going to five, five, find 5.5. And here it is, 5.5 on my, on my wheel. Okay? So I'm going to keep my eye on that spot. And I'm going to say now, this, the, the inside wheel at 5.5 is going to roll around to five columns on the outside. Okay? So these are matched up. Our original is 5.5 wide. And in the paper, we want it to be five columns wide. Okay, now we want to know the depth. Our original is 4.5, so that means in the paper, now we're looking at the inch counts. In the paper, that's about seven and a half inches deep. So that's a pretty big photo. Five columns wide, seven and a half inches deep. That's a big photo. What if we were going to use this much smaller? 
Let's decide we want to use it only two columns, just two columns wide. Very small photo, uh, pretty small. We don't have to remeasure. Our original stays the same. And again, we're starting with columns, so we'll go to 5.5. There's my 5.5. I'm going to now move around to the two column mark. 5.5 is at my two column mark, right? And I go to my original depth, four, four and a half. And we'll see we're about two and three quarter to two and seven eighths. So not quite three inches. So at two columns wide, this would only be about not quite three inches, two and three quarter inches deep. That's how much space we'd leave for it on our dummy, and that's how much space it would take up on our page. Now, just to help you master the wheel, and because once in a while you might want to do this, we can do it the other way. We can say that we need, we want a certain depth of photo, and we want to know how, how wide that would be, right? Usually we're saying width first, and then finding the depth, because our pages are measured on width, how many columns wide something is. But instead, we're going to say we want a photo that's, let's say, four, four inches deep, okay? Well, our true depth is 4.5. That's our original, so we find our 4.5 this time, 4.5. And I said four inches, right? So we'll move that around to the four. So we're going to be getting a little bit smaller. And I want to know what is the true width this time. And I want to know this in inches this time, because it won't match up the columns exactly, probably. So I go to my 5.5, and I see that 5.5 is about 5 inches. So I would say um, at 4 inches deep, this would be about 5 inches wide, which is not a surprise to you probably, right? Which is a little less than 3 columns. So that's the general idea of how we use the proportion wheel. Now we would transfer those numbers, whichever we chose, which column width, and the depth that it went along with it, to our dummy.